Hello everyone, welcome to another version of Peak Reviews. On today's episode, um, I wanted to talk about Superior Drummer 3 and the notorious latency issues that you have with Superior Drummer 3 and the fact that you would go to a drum kit or your, your actual e-kit, you would hit it and then there would be some sort of latency. So you would hit the snare like this and then it would like trigger in the door. So you'd hit it and then in the door it would come. So that is completely unusable and no good to anybody. You need to have it triggered exactly when you hit the kit. Like you can hear here, I'm hitting and it's triggering straight away. Now the first thing you should do, we'll talk about the settings in a minute. Um, incidentally, I'm using Superior Drummer 3 and I'm using the Bob Rock, Bob, Bob Cock, whatever you want to say. Uh, Rock Kit 2, it's amazing. It's the best one I've found, just as a tip. Um, I use Death and Darkness, but I prefer this one. just sounds really great. Uh, but aside from that, the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have enough hardware going. So make sure you have at least 16 gigabytes. Um, the latest DDR5 available um, and also a really good processor so like a AMD or a, you know an Intel that's capable of uh, at least eight cores because you need to this is quite a beast of a uh, program and it will require you to use a lot of processing power in order for you to to pump out the signal from your sound card from your MIDI kit to your sound card going into the digital audio workshop going into SD3. So there are like three different channels or four different channels we're talking about right now. So be aware of that. You need a real beast of a machine or even an intermediate machine. Can try eight gigabytes. I tried it before on a MacBook Pro. It was lots of clipping, delays. I had to adjust the settings and I couldn't get the best of it. So I couldn't lower the buffer rate as low as I wanted, which I'll talk about now. Um, so the next step you would need to do is you would need to go into the actual settings itself and go to MIDI E drums in. And you're going to need to set the preset, which is this one here. You're going to make sure it's the one that you're using. So the kit I've got is a Roland TD25. Going on to that subject, if you're going to buy a kit, I would make sure that you get one with at least uh, a snare rim trigger. So at like three points of triggering. So if I go on the Roland now, I hit the the edge, okay, I hit the middle, yeah, so I've got three points of trigger there, I've got the, I've got the rim shot, and I've got the uh, center point, and I've got the edge, and that, that replicates a real drum kit. So I recommend you get at least a, a, an e-kit that has those capabilities because otherwise you're going to get one sound. You can also do learn here. So you can learn and you can actually make it even more granular by really triggering all the sensors, um, just as a tip. But anyway, that's the first step you should do is use a preset. Why should you use that? Well, it takes all the um, correct signals from your brain going into your sound card then going into your PC so the channels are correct and you're going to be using the full utility presets that are available for this particular type of kit and there should be less latency and also the right triggering if you don't get the right triggering it's awful you cannot use it it's trash you can't do anything with it so that's the first step the next step and then you have to go into the door itself now in this case I have got a Ableton Live running I love it and uh, what you need to do is go into preferences. Now I don't know about QA, so I don't know about all the other doors, digital audio workshops, but you're gonna have to basically lower the buffer size down to as low as possible. On this case, um, I've got it at 512 samples and I've got high output rate. But what I recommend you do is um, lower it to the lowest possible and that would be 64 samples for the buffer size. Uh, but actually, you can see I have zero input latency and zero output latency. And I recommend that you actually get um, a software called FL Studios. Um, I can post it on the um, link below because this is an amazing ASO. Um, it has absolutely zero latency um, and it provides the best possible output. You can also do 
output recordings to other softwares as well, which is limited if you're using a, a typical, uh, I don't know, ISO for all, or example, the Studio ISO USB, which is for my actual uh, sound card. And I'm using a PreSonus sound card, by the way. And as you can see in the settings, there's another thing you need to do. Um, you need to go into your universal control settings for your actual sound card. As I say, I use a PreSonus sound card. And you need to put the, I put the sample up really high because I like good quality sound. Um, if you lower it, you get like a DVD sound um, in terms of sound output. So I go for the highest rate. Again, you need quite a beefy machine. And I put the block size down to the lowest possible. Um, if you put it onto 32 here, um, I don't have that option there, but there's an option to put it at 32, it's going to clip. So that, that's basically it now what you should be doing. Make sure you have all these things. Again, I'll give you the um, link for the FL Studio. By the way, a disclaimer, I do not take any responsibilities for things breaking, etc. It's on your own. I can only give you tips and this is what's working for me. Okay, so now we're going to go back into FCD3 and we're going to do a little drum solo. And you can see that this has absolutely zero latency. So. Okay, so as you can see, I was really going for it at the end there, and we had no latency. So I hope that helps you guys. Uh, we'll do more instruction videos for people that record on their own and try to learn it. Uh, took me about 11 years to get to this point. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I hope you liked the video. Please like, subscribe, and uh, leave comments. And uh, thank you to everyone that's already subscribed.